Welcome to my lightning talk on the R package data wrapper. My name is Benedikt Witzenberger. I work as a data journalist for Süddeutsche Zeitung in Munich, Germany, and I'm the author of the package. Data journalism has sparked a lot of interest during the last year, with visualizations, dashboards, and models being everywhere around the news and on social media. And COVID has kind of proven the value of journalists that have a sense for the sometimes a bit opaque side of numbers, their uncertainties, and their need for an explanation. In combination with the ability to explain and visualize data to a broader audience, data journalism really made a difference during the pandemic for many news corporations. As you could see, with the broad range of visualizations that came out during this time. As data journalists, we use R a lot in our everyday work. For example, to scrape data, to tidy it, or to analyze it. But we rarely use the visualization tools for publication. Take ggplot, for instance. It needs a lot of tweaking to arrive at a style guide acceptable theme. And for mobile and desktop screens, you will need at least two variants of each graphic with different dimensions. And this is um, where and why dynamic graphics come into play. This slide lists some options that you have for those. You could, of course, create those charts yourself by using libraries like D3 or high charts, which have really powerful R packages. But this requires at least some, maybe a lot of knowledge about the respective frameworks and probably a self-hosting instance. There are publication-ready software-as-a-service offerings like Plotly, Instagram, or Flourish. They come with a prepared set of kind of a standard toolbox of charts. Some even have special WIS types. Flourish, for example, offers a bar chart race out of the box. And some of those services already have a good R implementation, for example, Plotly. Others, at least, have an API that you can send calls to. And those all include hosting options. One of those ready for publication services is DataRiver, which I'm going to talk about a bit more. They are a small startup located in Berlin, and they were originally founded by journalists and visualization experts. And right now they've grown to, they've grown a lot during the last couple of years, and also their product has grown a lot. And up to this day, most of the news companies around the world use DataRiver for creating visualizations for their reporting, as well as some financial and governmental institutions. And I think one reason why DataRiver might be this popular, they have a very comfortable free tier, which covers nearly all the features, apart from branding. And it's very easy to use and embed in web pages, but still creates powerful and even slightly interactive charts. I created DataRiver, the R API library to the tool in the end of 2019 as a leisure time project, right on time for COVID. Until now, it is only available via GitHub. It offers access to the most used functions from within R, creating, updating data on the elements of a chart and publishing it. DataRub R became an important feature for automating COVID charts last year. We used it to update our charts and annotations twice an hour, modified maps and tooltips, and even created small multiples with an export function that allows image exports from the tool with our own branding. The next major release will bring increased API handling by using retries for the most important functions. It will also handle non-CSV formats better and a couple of arguments should work smarter. This next release, it's, uh, version 1.2, should be up within the next couple of weeks. I will try to make the library accessible via Chrome this year to simplify the download process. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me. I am Munich Rocker on Twitter and GitHub, or you could send me an email at info at benedict-witzenberger.de. Thanks for watching and enjoy the user.